There is a TikTok account with over 17 million followers who posts a lot of videos about his ferrets. While this account may seem wholesome and adorable, there is a very dark side to this that not a lot of people are aware of. Today we will be discussing an account called Floof Noodles and what happened to their ferret, Lucas. As well as the problem with TikTok accounts going viral after they mishandle their animals. I am so disgusted with the way that TikTok fails to handle certain situations like the one we are going to be discussing today. This is a story that I have not known about until it was brought to my attention, and I haven't heard any other YouTubers talking about this. I have seen a few people on TikTok discussing it, but we'll get into that in a few moments. There is a TikTok account with over 17 million followers. And this account on the surface looks like a very wholesome, loving, and adorable account. They have four ferrets. The account is called Floof Noodles. Adorable name, adorable content, adorable critters. Very, very cute. If you go to the comments on any given TikTok video that they upload, there are a lot of comments that say justice for Lucas. And then underneath those comments, people will ask, what is this about? I'm new to following this account and I can't find anything about it. And that's because all of this information has just been wiped from this account and any other accounts run by the person who's running the Floof Noodles TikTok. Justice for Lucas is about a ferret that was mistreated by the person who runs this account. And this ferret was brutally mishandled. Why people are so angry about this account is the fact that this person used that ferret along with his other ferrets to gain popularity online. He uses them like props in his videos. And he used this ferret in particular, along with his other ones, in a way that would gain him fame, attention, and clout, as the kids these days say. But this ferret was allegedly neglected and abused. All of the information has been wiped from the actual source, being the TikTok account, their Instagram account, but people have reposted images and videos and screenshots. Now, there is a TikTok account that is dedicated to raising awareness about Lucas the Ferret, and it's called Justice for Lucas. This account gives a lot of information and has shared a lot of the deleted posts from the Floof Noodles Instagram and TikTok account. Not only that, but Floof Noodles himself has often commented on these videos to which Justice for Lucas responded with, and there's a lot of back and forth. So since this is coming directly from the Floof Noodles account, we do know that he has at least acknowledged all of this. Some of the stuff he has responded to and denied, some of the stuff he has twisted a little bit, and we're going to get into some of it. I just wanna let you know that this video is not for the faint of heart. I really try not to make too many animal related videos because it makes me really, really upset. I hate talking about when people hurt their animals, innocent little creatures in this type of way. And I apologize in advance if I start getting a little emotional because this story is a lot. Lucas was a ferret that this person supposedly adopted that was already an elder ferret. It was older than the other ones. It had health problems and it had a condition. I can't pronounce it, but I'll add in a clip here. The condition is called insulinoma. This is a condition that affects middle-aged to older ferrets, and what it does is creates tumors in the pancreas. Not all of the tumors are cancerous. Not every ferret that has insulinoma has cancer. This creator is claiming that his ferret did have cancer or maybe cancerous tumors, but a lot of people are wondering if the ferret actually did have cancer or if it just had this condition. With everything that I have seen, regarding this situation, I do not know if the ferret for sure actually had cancer, but I'm going off of what the owner said. The owner claims that the ferret did have terminal cancer on top of this, so that's just the assumption. Normally when I cover topics, it's a lot easier to find information regarding the subject of the video, but considering that everything has been erased and the only information we have is what is reposted by people who have seen it, it's a little harder to piece things together. If a ferret has this type of cancer, it needs to be 
handled with extra care. It needs to be fed at very specific times because their glucose levels can dramatically decrease and it can cause seizures. So it's very important to keep a very good track of feeding ferrets with this condition. This person actually reached out to people in what I assume is the ferret community, either on TikTok, Instagram, online. There are some TikTok accounts that have shared alleged conversations between them and the account runner of Floof Noodles, who at this point in time does not have their name listed publicly that I can find anywhere, so we're just gonna call them Floof Noodles. In the messages that this person had allegedly sent, Floof Noodles claims that he could not really afford to take on a fourth ferret, and he didn't know if he could do it. Again, this is an alleged conversation because we don't have them confirming or denying it. They had also gotten another ferret, this would be the fifth ferret, and it was a baby. They went from saying, that they could not care for a fourth ferret, let alone an older ferret, to getting both the fourth older ferrets and a baby ferret along with it. This is something that comes across as extremely impulsive and irresponsible because if you are unsure that you are able to care for one ferret, why would you get two on top of the three that you already had? And if you heard a sigh, it's Chester. I know you can't see him, but he's right at the bottom of my legs. <laughs> he is always sitting nearby whenever I'm filming. Time goes by, videos are made, and Floof Noodles is gaining million after million followers on TikTok at one point, I believe sometime last August, I remember seeing a post where he is thanking people for six million followers on TikTok. That is a lot of people. About a year ago, Floof Noodles makes a post about his ferret Lucas. The post is really f***ed up. He goes on to say that he was in a bad mental headspace and couldn't afford the proper food for his ferrets for two days. Basically, Lucas the ferret was starved for two days before Floof Noodles had even said anything about this. You let your animal starve to death and waited for them to meet their ultimate demise before saying anything. They claimed that they didn't want to reach out for help because they didn't want to depend on other people. Listen, I can understand that it might be a very uncomfortable decision to ask for help. Even I've been in that situation before and it's really hard to deal with. It could feel embarrassing, you could feel a lot of emotions when you're going through a tough time and you're asking for help, but sometimes it's what you have to do. But not only that, what's even worse is the fact that this person has allegedly received thousands of dollars in donations from other people prior to this happening. So you're okay accepting donations from people prior to this, but now when something serious is going on, it's too much to ask. It's too much to put up a TikTok and say, hey, can anybody donate to this GoFundMe or PayPal or Venmo or whatever so I can get some food for my ferret? You have six million followers. I guarantee you at least one person would be willing to lend you or donate 25 bucks or 60 bucks or however much it costs so you could feed your ferret so it wouldn't seize and die. But instead, because they were in a bad mental headspace, they decided that, well, you know, it is what it is. I am not trying to knock anybody for being depressed or feeling overwhelmed and not wanting to take on like normal everyday responsibilities. But when it comes to caring for another life, that's when you need to make a decision if you cannot mentally handle whatever is going on to the point where it is affecting the way that you care for your animals or anybody else whose life depends on you, then maybe you shouldn't have those animals. Maybe you shouldn't have ferrets if you can't care for them because you're not doing well. And, and that might sound mean, but at the end of the day, it's still a life at stake and these ferrets don't deserve to have their life jeopardized because their owner doesn't feel like taking care of them or their owner's going through a bad day. So they don't wanna go to the store and get ferret food or have it delivered. Later 
Later on, it is revealed in another alleged conversation that this person claimed, oh, well, no, I did feed the ferrets. I was just out of their regular food. So I fed Lucas a hard boiled egg and some honey. But when you look up information regarding the condition that this ferret had, it actually tells you not to feed them things that are sweet like honey. At first, Floof Noodles did not mention feeding Lucas an egg or honey and claimed that the reason he didn't mention this prior was because he was having memory issues from the antidepressants he was on. But as somebody who is also on antidepressants, albeit there are different types of antidepressant medications used for different things, I don't think that I would forget something like that. And most people who I know who are on antidepressants don't forget things like that. It's really by bothering me how hard this person is trying to use their mental health to get out of responsibility for this situation. And not only that, but another excuse he said was that he just lied about the situation and exaggerated things. Why would you lie about something like that? And why would we believe that you lied about something like that when you literally showed pictures of your ferret in this state? Just imagine being very, very sick and you have the equivalent to ferret diabetes. Imagine you are put in a room and the person caring for your life gives you a hard boiled egg with some honey and says this is what you have to eat for the next two days obviously that's a health concern obviously and sure you might say oh well tamimi ferrets are smaller than humans so you know it's more for them than it would be for a person it's still not a substantial replacement for their actual food and i just can't imagine having an animal go through that and not caring at all about the fact that not only do you have an elderly ferret who's starving, but you also have an elderly ferret who's going through cancer and a lot of health problems who was starving. And because it's starving, it's having seizures and it's suffering and you're doing nothing about it. You're doing absolutely nothing about this poor creature whose life depends on you. You just let them waste away until the last given second to post something. And you know what happens when they post something? You know what they did? It's really great. It really is. I'm totally being sarcastic here, by the way. It's being disgusting. This person had taken pictures of their ferret. And to clarify, I'm not sure if the ferret was live in these pictures. I'm obviously not going to show them. There is a little bit of debate on that. At first, it was claimed that these were pictures of the ferret after it had died. But then the owner of the ferrets turned around and said, no, he was still alive at that point. He was in a coma. And then we took him to the vet who euthanized him. Which, by the way, the vet bill was shown and it was proven through the vet bill that, yeah, something was going on where this ferret was probably starved because they needed a glucose shot for him. Their glucose levels were really low from not being fed. Either way, first of all, you're taking pictures of your pet in a state in which it had suffered. The pictures were not peaceful. I'll say that they were they were not peaceful. They were very horrific photos that I every time like I close my eyes in the past like 12 hours, I, I see them and they're horrifying. He also publicly shared photos of Lucas's body, be it deceased or in a coma state with the other ferrets. If the ferret was not yet deceased, why would you take pictures of it like this instead of getting it emergency help right away? And if he was already deceased in these photos, that means you had taken it to get euthanized and then brought it back home to pose it with your alive ferrets? In either case, what is wrong with you? There was a picture of this poor ferret in what looked like a trash bag, and then they threw the trash bag in a hole they had dug up and just buried them real quick. This is supposed to be your pet. This is supposed to be an animal that you cared for. You're supposed to love your animals. And the worst part is, in some of these alleged messages, he kind of treated it like it was a joke. And maybe they were just grieving and going through it and maybe this is how they cope with that being said if that is the way that you're coping it would be a lot different if the animal didn't die because you neglected it and on top of that the response that this person has given to the criticisms the backlash and the concern about this ferret is absolutely unacceptable i'm sorry lucas's death my recent ferret death was my fault i didn't have food for the ferrets because i was broke because i didn't want no one's money Money, and I was mentally bad. I didn't have food for my ferrets for two days. Lucas had pancreas cancer, and when a ferret with this cancer goes without food for two days, extreme decreases
increase in sugar levels start, which leads to a lot of seizures. I just didn't have hope and thought I was alone. I for real could not have been more stronger that time. Lucas might have lived longer with this cancer if I took action. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Lucas. I adopted him at five and he didn't have a great owner. He was in a cage 24-7. I decided to adopt Lucas. I wanted to improve his situation and wanted Lucas to be a part of my ferret family. I wish I knew more about ferrets, more about insulinoma, or have done more research to prevent insulinoma. He is a martial ferret and I had to do better with my other ferrets and take step by step for the others to have a better lifestyle. I'm sorry. I just confessed with God 10 minutes ago about what happened to Lucas. It wasn't my intention for Lucas to die. I never knew how bad Lucas's illness was. No parent is perfect. No one is perfect. If you check my Instagram, Floof Noodles, you will see how great I'm giving my current ferrets the best life. They are happy and well fed and cared. I told God when I confessed frankly that I want to devote my life to ferrets and that I want to make an impact for the ferret community patiently. Every professional about ferrets, please contact me. Let's help the ferret community in, in the many issues there currently are. I cannot handle so many things by myself. We got this. If you want to make justice, let's make justice for the current ferret laws, the current bad ferret food, and more. Guys, about the not feeding my ferrets anything was a lie. Sometimes I over-exaggerate and write things. I have to check what I write. I remember I did feed them eggs, and I have proof of it. I was waiting on the kibble for them to arrive on the 27th. Just so you know, I didn't let Lucas starve to death. I took him to an emergency appointment, but it was too late. And also because of lack of transportation, I had to wait until someone arrived to take me there. My baby was in a coma, and was still suffering in a coma, and I just didn't want him to suffer no more. So I signed a goodbye paper for him. And I just don't want my other ferrets to go through the same thing. Because it's hard. And I'm so sorry for not taking action. Lucas was actually on medication. But that didn't help. I'm working step by step now to be a better influencer for the ferret community. The reason I'm doing this is because I get paid zero dollars for the work I did on TikTok the past eight months. Now my mom is dying. Her back hurts. Even got surgery recently. And still working. My ferret's appointments are worth above $250. $50 each. They are gonna die and I have nothing in my bank account. I come from a low income family. I've been working three jobs and still don't have enough money. I think I'm gonna put them down. I would never ask you guys for money. It's the least that I could do. I guess I'm gonna work hard without social media. I have seen that I've become less known since the engagement rate has been low lately. If you guys would like to donate anything, the link is in my bio to save my ferrets and my mom. I won't do a video of myself crying over camera. I hope you understand. Thank you. To my haters, if you aren't, don't read this. From now on, I will try to pretend you aren't there. You guys are very mean. I hope that in the long term, none of you get sick because of the hate you do to me, because everything has a consequence, and if you do bad, you get what you do. I hope that one day you realize how beautiful life is when just focusing on you, nature, and the people that you love. I say this because I used to be a hateful person too, but I learn to love myself and love life and to love the people that I care for the most. And it was hard but takes time as anything that requires dedication, determination, mindfulness, and perseverance to do. Thank you. He just went live and had the balls to sit and laugh at everyone while they expressed genuine concern over his ferrets. They have gone to such lengths to make this so much worse than it already was that I can't even wrap my head around it. They threatened to euthanize their other ferrets. By the way, if you couldn't afford to feed your one sick and dying ferret, that tells me that you probably weren't feeding the other two ferrets for two days either. Not only that, but again, you have, at that point, what, six million followers? You were receiving donations prior, allegedly. You couldn't make one post saying, hey, we're in a dire situation right now. We could really use some help. Can you please support us by sending a donation? I guarantee you with six million followers, at least one person would. One person would have. He recently made a post sharing how he had taken his other four still living ferrets to the vet for a checkup. In any other circumstance, I wouldn't say that it's too weird to show that your pet's at the vet and that you're properly taking care of them, but considering everything that had happened, to me this feels like he is doing this on purpose to show his audience, see look, I'm taking care of my animals, they're getting a checkup. I'm glad to see that they were at least checked up on by a vet, and I hope that if any of them actually need any medical care that they're actually receiving that, but in my opinion, one simple picture of your ferrets who are still alive being at the vet does not change 
change anything that had happened, and it certainly does not ease any worry I have for these other ferrets. Another concern that I have is that sometimes he adds other animals into these videos, and then we don't see the animals again. Like this dog, this is the same thing that other TikTok account did with their Belgian Malinois. They would add other animals in for videos and then never show them again, making people worry what happened to them. I don't think this person deserves to have the ferrets that he still has because of what he has done to Lucas. There is no excuse for what had happened to that poor creature. If you knew that you couldn't take care of a ferret that needed a lot of assistance and supervision and needs to be fed at very particular times of the day, you should have taken the responsibility of trying to rehome that ferret that could get more proper care. There is another issue that I need to briefly mention regarding Floof Noodles, which are the accusations that Floof Noodles is using their account to inappropriately talk to underage followers. There have been many accusations of this from outside perspectives, but I haven't seen seen any proof of this myself or anybody coming forward as a potential victim of this, at least from everything I have seen on this subject so far. Something could have been posted and then deleted and maybe I didn't catch it, but for right now I am just covering the fact that people have made these claims. Since I have not seen anybody come forward who was directly affected by this, taking it with a grain of salt for now unless any more information comes forward. The most that I have seen so far is a message where Floof Noodles allegedly said that he dated an 18 year old when he was 11, but that would be more problematic on the side of the 18 year old who he dated, not him for being 11. Again, there could be some more information that I'm missing because this is a very unorganized situation and all I have are things that people re-uploaded. I'm so, so sick of this being allowed on TikTok. I don't understand what is wrong with TikTok in the sense that there are very clear attempts for people to call things out the way that it's done on YouTube. But when people try to call things out on TikTok about their bigger creators, TikTok not only doesn't seem to do anything about it, but they seem to either take videos down or suppress content. And TikTok continues to reward this person by pushing him in the algorithm. He had gained, since last year, over 10 million followers. He has 17 million followers right now. And to this day, people are still commenting justice for Lucas on his videos and nothing's being done about it. It's completely vanished from the internet like it never happened. I don't blame the viewers of this guy content because most people don't even look at comments on TikTok. They just see videos and scroll because attention spans have been shortened more and more due to this platform. But when this is brought to the platform's attention and nothing is done about it, that's what I find completely awful. And what's even worse is seeing brands like PetSmart commenting on Floof Noodles videos and praising him for his ferret videos. Now, I don't always agree when people try to use sponsorships or brands against creators, but but when it comes to things like animal abuse, it's really disappointing to see companies associated with animals promoting this. It's really a shame because this account does seem really cute. I mean, the little ferrets are adorable. When you realize what's actually happening behind the scenes, it's really jaw-dropping. And I really genuinely hope that this person is caring for their ferrets now after this situation. And I know it was a year ago and people in the comments of these videos are like, oh, well, it happened a year ago. Why is it a big deal? Because one of his pets died from his own neglect. And there are so many things he could have done to prevent that from happening, but ultimately decided not to. And on top of that, that pet and his other pets are what is giving him fame and making him more and more popular on TikTok. Thank you so much if you've made it all the way to the end of this video. I know that this topic was really hard to get through. This one wasn't scripted as my other videos normally are. I just wanted to talk about this in a way that made me blow off steam about all of it because it's really, really upsetting to me. Thank you so much to the person who brought this to my attention. Normally, I don't catch all of the tags that I'm posted in, 
but this one time I caught it and I really just wanted to sit down and talk about it. Before I end this video though, there are some unrelated things that I want to share. This is not the video I was expecting to add this information in because I was originally working on a different video when I found out about this topic. I have a few announcements uh, just for my channel in general and this is something that I had already planned, just not for this video. So let's just take a breath for a second and just kind of kind of collect ourselves after all of that information. And if you want to stay here for those announcements, I appreciate it. Completely unrelated to anything we've talked about though. So I have a lot of really, really not so bad stuff happening right now. Um, and then some stuff that really is a little bit more serious that I need to tend to. But I have some stuff going on and a lot of it's pretty good stuff. I just don't know when I can talk about it publicly. It has to do with um, my current living situation and that might change soon in a good way and on top of that there's also a lot of wedding stuff that I'm doing and some health related things that I'm trying to tend to which I've mentioned briefly in my previous video I think it was my most recent one I just have a lot <laughs> on my plate right now in terms of just making plans and getting stuff together working on my physical health on top of everything else that I'm always already doing with that being said it is going to make creating content content a little bit more sporadic. You might see me in the same shirt a lot because I'm bulk recording videos or instead of it being every Saturday, it might be a Saturday and then a Monday. It is going to be a little choppy <laughs> uh, here and there until things slow down a little bit. I hope that that is soon. I just don't know how soon soon is. Just be aware if you're used to seeing me post on Saturdays and you don't see a Saturday upload, everything should be fine. I'm just taking a little bit extra time to get some other stuff done, stuff that needs to be prioritized, so. Yeah. I do have a list of content that I'm planning on making. Just be aware that I'm not on my phone and on social media a lot right now. And it was just a complete shot in the dark that I even caught this notification about this story today. I, I also, I am not going to be covering tons and tons of animal related stories. Not because I just don't want to or don't feel like it, it's just because if I talk about it too much, it makes me really, really upset. So be aware of that as well. I just really wanted to cover this topic because this is something that really struck a nerve with me and made me really upset and I needed to talk about it, especially since I haven't seen anybody discussing it. Um, with that being said, I will see you later. Thank you so much to everybody supporting me on Patreon, especially Lewis, Miss Anisha, Anthony, Tressel, and Michelle, and Deemer, WM. I will see you in the next video where we will probably be talking about Andrew Tate. Yay.